the next person we have coming up here, uh, as I said before, has a, a number of different accolades under belt, multiple victories, and just about to uh, gi, no gi, everything. Uh, big warm welcome for uh, Felicia O. Oh. Thanks, Eddie. And um, uh, some people know I got my black belt from Jean Jacques Machado after training for four and a half years. And I used to train with Eddie down there. And when Eddie came back after 2003 Abu Dhabi, he opened his own school. And I used to go down there and train. After training at Jean Jacques, I'd go to Eddie's. And one of the things that he really stressed a lot was drilling, 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 drilling. And part of the reason I went there was to get more of that drilling time in. Um, so I'm actually going to go back a little bit into sort of um, a basic armbar, somewhere between a more traditional armbar, um, but not quite as crazy as Eddie's armbars. And I'm going to go through the armbar, show you some details, and then go over some problems um, that I see a lot of students having. Um, so we're in the mount, and like Eddie's saying, you know, we have the hook, the elbows. I'm going to take my hand. And again, this is for a drill, and I believe that drilling, uh, especially basic drills like arm bars, I think a lot of the people today have taught arm bar variations. So what the drilling teaches us is to keep all the details so that when we are in rolling or in a competition, that our body automatically knows what to do. Like your body, the coordination of your muscles together already knows so that you can dream about it and you can do it without thinking about it. So we're here, we're going to push the elbow, uh, the tricep across. I'm going to keep my chest low so that I have a good base. I don't want to be up here because then he just pulls it back and I have nothing. So we're going to block it with our chest and stay low. I'm going to keep my hand out here for base. Okay, I'm going to slide my left knee up toward his ear. And I'm going to stay sitting up by his shoulder. Okay, the other leg comes up pointing to the ceiling and close to his body. And at this point, instead of facing, I started facing the same way as him. As I slide up, I'm gonna make a bit of a quarter turn, so now I'm facing over his far arm, okay? I can go a little more advanced technical mount, or I can just drop. So I'm gonna drop my hand. It's gonna come in right tight to his neck so he can't move. And I'm gonna lean my head toward his feet, okay? So that lets me bring this leg around. If I don't lean, and I, no matter how flexible you are, it becomes a little more difficult. So I'm going to lean, circle my knee, pinch my knees, hug the arm, control the thumb, sit back. So as, uh, actually turn. So as we slide up, a lot of times people will sit to their heel. I want to stay sitting on top of him, and I want to be right under his armpit. I don't want to be down at his ribs, because then he can pull his elbow back in. So as I block it, I stay low, and I slide up. Now my belly's blocking it, and I start to turn. My arm stays in tight, okay? And as I lean, I don't have to worry about falling over. Some students get really scared about leaning over. So even if I lean all the way, my head just bases. And I can even do this. We saw one of the guys do that earlier. So. There's nothing to be scared of about leaning, and I bring that leg around. Then as we sit back, we have that hook. I can control the wrist, the thumb. I keep my knees pinched, my heels are keeping pressure on him. They're pulling in, I'm keeping this here. If I'm loose, he's just gonna reach under and push it off his face and get out. So I'm gonna keep pinching and pulling tight. Okay, and then that stops where his arm is gonna bend. I hug it to my chest. If I'm here, and I just sit back here, then we have that classic, it's my arms against his arms. So at this point, I'm gonna sit up to it as I control it, bringing it to me and connecting it to me. And then my whole upper body and my hips open up. So now it's my whole body against his arm. Okay, knees pinching. Okay, another classic problem. This has probably happened. So we're here, we're excited, we're rolling and we go to the arm bar, and they roll up on us, okay? So, again, we need to take this leg and put it around his neck. So, as we lean, my leg comes across and I can sit here. As long as I'm sitting on here, I can have a lot more control, okay? Sometimes we, uh, people learn the arm bar here, and now he has space and then he can move. So when I sit there and I lean, he can't move. Then I have a lot more control. If we want to go any side, we can switch our elbow and grab the leg, okay? So, again, mount, lock, 
Slide up, stay sitting on him, don't sit back. Stay sitting, stay sitting, lean. Your leg comes around, knees pinch, hug, pinch, sit back. Okay. So um, as I was talking about, I think a lot of um, progress can be made from drilling. And there's this idea about 10,000 hours of repetitions. So if we take that into sports, we might say 10,000 repetitions instead of 10,000 hours. If we multiply out 10,000 over the course of a year, and if we train five days a week, that actually only ends up being 42 reps a day. So if we go 21 on one side and 21 on the other, it's really not that much, right? Like it's, it's doable, it's not like 10,000, and that's only in a year. So you could probably master your, uh, your arm bar in a year doing that. There are lots of variations, but being aware as you're drilling each step of the way, so that when we're going through each step, we're in checklisting every piece so that we don't forget to do something. Uh oh, I forgot this, or the leg is loose. Okay, fix that. I know a lot of times we learn techniques in class, and um, the teacher shows a technique, and everyone goes back with their partner and they try to do it, and there's a lot of problems, and so you do it again and again, and you start to work out your problems. And then you finally figure it out. Maybe the teacher came over or one of your other students helped you figure out how to make the move work and you finally get it done. And then your partner goes and then it's, t and then it's time to learn the next technique. So you really only did one rep correctly. You might have done like seven, eight, nine, ten incorrectly, but you've only done one correctly. And so the idea is to practice those 10,000 as correctly as possible. Does that make sense? Yeah. So drill, drill, it doesn't matter if different variations of things on your moves. Just keep drilling them so that they become automatic so that you don't have to think about them. And then when you're drilling, sometimes we always know whatever we do it doesn't happen textbook. Like we try them, we practice the technique, maybe at 100%. By the time we do when we're rolling, it might drop to about 70 because it's always a little bit messier and a little crazier, a lot of other problems going on. But at 70%, that's still a passing grade. That's still going to get us what we want to get. And um, that's pretty good. If we are drilling at a 60, 70% and it's wrong a lot of the time, details aren't in place, then that drops to about a 40%. 40% is not a passing grade. So anyway, keep training to reach your potential, and then we want to exceed your potential. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for Felicia. Oh, now, uh, you have a website. The Art of get more information. Thank you for asking. Very well. <laughs> Theartofcompetition.com is where I'm putting together um, from all my time competing, and I think competing is how I progress really quickly in the sport that usually takes a lot longer to progress in. Um, I'm putting together some seminars and other training tools for people to accelerate their progress outside of the techniques that they're learning from their instructors. So it's about conditioning, it's about mindset, it's about how to drill, how to train in class with your partners. All those things to help us accelerate and get better faster. And it really is contagious in the rest of your life, isn't it? I mean, I mean, I mean speak, speak, talk, to, talk to everybody about how Was martial arts has, effect, has <laughs> yes, exactly. How martial arts has affected your life and how the success you've had on the mat and the competition, and only in your own academy, how that's translated to the real world. Because I know that's a big part of uh, what you teach and, where you come from. Well, it's definitely a struggle like with the martial arts because like I said, we don't get into it to make money and be, it's really a passion. But when you start to have students that come in and you see what it does to them and how they struggle and you know that what that struggle was and then all of a sudden you see that you're teaching something and a piece falls into place and their face lights up and it changes the life. Oh, and in my mind, I'm going, I've been telling you that every day for six months, but it finally made sense into the world. It just world. clicks. It just and it's, clicks. it's the same as like when you're a child, you're not ready for all this information. And as you get older and you start to learn about life and different things happen and, and your world becomes much bigger. And it's the same thing when you get to show that in this different way with jujitsu with people. I, I, it, it's, it's wonderful for myself as well. Every time you see that little click in somebody, they start to get it, and they start to execute properly something that you've been drilling and you've been teaching them for maybe two, three, four, five, six months, and then suddenly they start hitting on opponents, and a light goes off, their eyes glow, and everything comes full circle, and they realize you know the fruits of their labor for three to six months. And I think that's such an awesome feeling that you were able to help someone get to that. And then it happens again and again, as we know in jiu-jitsu. You think you know something, and then 
you, you pretty quickly find out. Uh, I don't. <laughs> thought, I, thought, thought, thought I knew that, but Always I guess more. I don't. Well, thank you very much, thank Felicia. So much. Uh, how, how do they get a hold of you for, for more information? Uh, theartofcompetition.com. You can email me at Felicia at theartofcompetition.com. It's also on Facebook. Thank you very much, Felicia. Pleasure. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Pleasure, sir. Take it away. All right, here we are. So um, I'm going to work on a couple of techniques. Uh, a couple of passes from the butterfly guard. Um, one a little easier, since I know you have a wide variety of people out there, and one a little more complicated, a little more, you have to understand the anatomy of the body a little more, and I'm going to show you that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is have Ghazi lay down with her head this way facing you. The basic first thing I'm going to show to help set up both of these positions is what I call getting two to one, or getting two legs to one leg. So right now you got her legs here wide here. When I say two to one, what I mean is I have one leg on this leg, and I have one leg on this leg. So we have two legs on each other's leg right now. And I want to get two legs to one, meaning I want to end up getting like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you that in a minute. The first thing I want to keep in mind is you want to have, my basic position first of all is going to have my elbows tight, under the tricep, under the thighs on both sides. My knees are going to walk in real tight. I don't want to have any space here. I'm going to have a real snug, a real tight here. This is going to get hard, make it hard for her to push away. Leverage base, leverage wise, if I was to move a little bit farther away, even give her this much space, and she wanted to push away, she can move. Simply because you know, if you try it on yourself, if you try to push her arm really tight like this and hold it real tight and try to straighten it out, it's very hard. If you put it here and try to straighten it out, it's not that hard. So same concept. That's my first step of it. Now I'm gonna turn this around so you can see what I'm gonna do. <coughs> When you have butterfly guard, they use your hooks here a lot and follow your legs around. So you try to move your legs, they're with you a lot, no matter what I do. I'm going to do this first, I'm going to do it fast, and then I'm going to show you slow. Now what I did, sometimes it takes two times, four times, five times. It actually is following me. My hips going to start turning inwards. And watch your foot. I'm going to make her cross her feet up. Yeah. Okay. If the new goes here, we'll this. She follows me around. I'm stuck. That's my foot move. Now, if you notice where I am, I have two to one. Turn around again. The first basic pass is simple. She's basically, I'm going to bury my head on the side of her body. It's real tight here. This hand's going to be under her arm. You see, the legs are already here, so I'm really already past. And all I'm going to do is put my hand real tight to my body, make space, push it through, bring my left knee in deep. Here, and if I want to stay here, or go back in here, which is my, my preferred side control is going to be. Whatever that would be. <laughs> Once again, no space here. I don't have to bring her to me. I can just bring my arms real tight to the floor and walk in, snug. She can push away from me if she wants. If she has a gi on, I can hold here in her armpits. My elbows are tight. She have a very hard time getting away. My legs are going to do that move. Follow my legs. Boom. I'm going to turn it around again. I'm going to go deep here. Hands here. Knee here. Grab her arm. Sit under it. And here. Once again. Go snug. Boom. Head deep. Close my body, head out too far. Straighten it out. When he comes in, blocking her knee. Grab her tricep. Sit deep. And here. That's the first one. The second one I like. Move from sideways, I think. Yeah. This one you gotta understand. The elbow's right here. 
If I grab her, I'm gonna grab her around her whole body. But she's trying to set up her butterfly on me. If I grab too high, see, first of all, here, she'll have her elbow um, leverage, so she can start working that. So I'm gonna grab my head, hit my head on her chest, and grab her really low under her elbows. Right here. Now, I'm gonna put my head on her chest, I'm gonna push it forward. I'm gonna turn my face so you can hear me, but really I'm gonna be here. Push it forward, and it's gonna tighten her back. My legs are real tight again. Now, same thing with my legs. Lower my legs. Now, what I'm gonna do here is her knees kind of high. If I try to step over it, I'm gonna put my base off this direction. So I'm gonna lean my, walk my body over a little bit to the right, which makes your knee low to the floor. I'm gonna step here, over it, not down, on my foot over it. I'm gonna use my knees to do a switch. I'll do it fast first. Once again, you're slow. I bring her knee to the floor by walking over, stepping deep, into to my leg, and I go, boom, boom. Now, if I let her get her elbows <coughs> under my elbow, she can start throwing me forward. That's why I wanted to make sure that I'm deep here. From here, all I'm gonna do so she doesn't get behind me, is put my hand on the neck, sit back. She has no way she can be able to lift me forward. She'll take her arm out, or she'll stay there. Put her arm out here, and I'll go back. Once again, start position. So that one again, we're starting to play. Real deep. Heads here, it's tight. Boom, follow me around. Boom. I walk over to the right, so her knee's close to the floor. Step up, so I'm past her knee, not down, because I need this leverage to move her leg. Throat, back away, just take her arm out. That's basically it. There's a couple of ones you can work on. Make sure the second one you're really clear that if I, my shirt off, that if I reach over her arm here, like loosen up for me, even here, she can start lifting me up, making it harder. So I want to be under this. She's also small, small for me, so it's hard to get real deep. Now we go real low under it. The chest down, she's really tight on her. Feels uncomfortable. And then I'm gonna hit. Boom, boom, this side. Boom, follow it. Boom. Walk it down. Step up. Boom. Switch. And she didn't keep her arm there, so I'm okay. All right? That's it for now, work on that. Repetition is key. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, thanks very much. Uh, a true legend of the sport. Thank you very much, brother, for showing up, man, and helping us out. But, uh, now, Gazzy Parman would like to demonstrate a couple positions. Cool. The floor is yours. Thanks. Hey, guys, how you doing? I'm Gazzy Parman. Um, wow, we had a lot of awesome black belts show a lot of great stuff today. Uh, if you didn't know who Ronda Rousey is, now you do. By the way, she's not the only one that can do an awesome arm bar. We got two awesome female black belts under this roof. I'm one of them. Please show us another. Um, today, I'm going to show something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to show you guys body movement. Now, I know we have guys that are advanced watching this right now. And we have beginners watching this right now as well. So, I'd like to do something a little bit different, which is start out with a drill that's going to turn into the technique that I'm going to show you today, which is called the Gazinator. All right, um, I'm going to have my instructor, John Lewis, here demonstrate for me. So first thing that I'm going to ask John to do is just stand here wide, OK? Um, in fact, if you face the camera. Um, for beginners, gentlemen, you might want to hold yourself, OK? Um, so I'll start off on one side here. Now, this is going to be a little bit difficult for the bigger guys. This is generally a smaller guy move, but if you're a big guy and you can conquer this move, no matter how long it takes you, it could take you a month, it could take you six months, it could take you a year. But it's definitely something, don't like try and be like, oh, this isn't my move, okay? Do it, it's good for you, okay? Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is stay in tight to this leg, right, I got a good base here. I'm on my right butt cheek, okay? You don't wanna be on both butt cheeks. You can't maneuver as, as, uh, as well with when you're on both butt cheeks, okay? So I'm on one butt cheek and I'm hugging his leg. 
Okay, so I'm gonna dive underneath and I'm gonna grab his far ankle. Okay, keep the leg stiff. Okay, now for those of you that might have a problem with this, go ahead and grab the other ankle as well. Lift your butt high up in the air. Other leg goes in, other leg comes out, and I sit up on the other side. Okay, I'll do it one more time slow. For, for the guy that's doing, that's standing here, for the drill, make sure you keep your legs wide, okay? This is just a maneuver drill for the person that's on their butt, okay? So I'm gonna dive in, grab the ankle, switch my legs, come out to the other side, okay? Now this is gonna teach you how to maneuver on your back, which is a huge thing in jiu-jitsu. You have to know how to roll around on your back, okay? So one more time, okay? Now key is here to stay off the side of your hips. You want your butt to be up in the air. I want both of my butt cheeks to, to face the ceiling there. Okay, so I dive in, grab the far ankle. My butt comes up in the air. I can do this with one hand. Most of you guys, especially the, the men, will have a harder time. One leg comes in, other leg comes out. Use it to flip myself around, okay? One last time. Okay, so I'll end up in this position. Now, what this is gonna turn into is uh, we're going to start from the butterfly guard position here. All right, I started training in 1998. So when I started training, there was not a lot of women training on the mats. I was generally paired up with a man, and he was usually a lot bigger than myself. Uh, the cameraman's actually one of the guys I used to roll with all the time. Um, so I'll start here in the butterfly guard, okay? And this guy here does this little grapevine thing with my legs, under over, goes under over, and he starts smashing both my knees together. Right? Well, if I get into this situation, I kind of already screwed up, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get here and I'm on guard. This guy weaves his hand in. I know the next move he's gonna make is to smash my legs together and break me down, put my back on the ground. I'm not gonna let that happen. Not all the way, okay? So as he's going down, my leg on the side that he's hooking is gonna come out around to his back. So he pushes down, I fall to my side very gently, and I bring my leg out. There goes half my move, okay? Again. So he goes here, leg comes out. Now, as that leg comes out, I'm simultaneously going to grab his tricep. You could do this gi, you could do a no gi, okay? By the way, it's called the gazinator, don't forget. Okay, so I'm gonna extend this leg, and I've got this arm trapped. So he tries to pull his arm out. No, it's not gonna happen. Now, this guy has kinda has no idea what's going on, okay? It's kinda like cave move. Once you figure it out, it might not happen again, but at least it's a good defense so you don't get your guard passed, okay? So this guy here starts coming around. He's like, yeah, I got the pass, I got the pass, I got the pass. Actually, no, you don't, okay? If you go flat, if he flattens you out, okay, yeah, if, then he's got the pass. Do not get on the flat of your back, okay? So now I have this leg extending straight, this arm, this arm weaving in through. This might be a little confusing here, okay? So I'm gonna weave through between my own legs, curl my body inward, grab his tricep, okay? On the side that I'm laying on. Right? Now, I'm not going to go flat on my back. I'm going to stay on my side. He keeps coming forward thinking he's got the pass. Great. I'm going to take this hand here, go across to his other, could be his rib, could be his leg, whatever you can grab at the time. Okay? Just don't let go of this arm. My other foot, okay? Um, turn this way. Okay, if you can see the, the bottom of my toes, just these little toe, two toes right here are going to base out on the floor to help get my butt up to the uh, sky. So here, and so he, John kept his head down, that's good. So you can either roll through with a omoplata or starting from the beginning, okay? He breaks me down, I bring my leg out right away and I grab his tricep, he starts smashing, no problem. Okay, he starts coming around for the pass. I'm gonna spin around, okay? Let's say this time he decides not to keep his head up, I mean down, he's gonna keep it up and I'm gonna swing right into the triangle from here, okay? Okay. Oma plata. Trying. Super easy. And then from here, let's say this guy's awesome at, he just doesn't get choked. Okay? So what I'll do is I'll just keep his elbow on the side, keep his head pressed into me, grab his whole arm, and windshield wiper him. Or if you like arm bars, you can do arm bar triangle, any of those things, okay? All right, so that's called the gosnator. 
There's one other one I'd like to show you that I think is pretty cool. Um, it's when they go double under. <clears throat> so they try to double under hook past you, right? Stack you up and stuff. <clears throat> so he goes under. Now, as soon as I feel this happen, it's an alarm has to go off. You have to react right away. If you don't, he's gonna go ahead and <clears throat> do it. Right? He's gonna set. Right? Too late. Okay? So as soon as I feel him going, okay, he's not bionic. Well maybe John is, but Okay, so here, as soon as I feel that right away, I gotta get off to one side, one elbow. He's gonna stack. He's gonna keep stacking. Okay? Now, it doesn't matter which leg you choose. Okay? One leg has to go inside. It could be this leg. I didn't really have the room for that side. It could be this leg. It doesn't matter. Okay? And then you're just gonna sit up, grab his neck, choke him, flip him, whatever you want. It's so easy and it's usually always there. Okay? I call this one the Gazatron. One more time. So he goes under, boom. I go, oh crap. Okay, let's say he gets a good position where, you know, he's a little bit tighter than I want him to be. He starts stacking, right? So I can lift up my hips, bring my elbows out. That's one way to save yourself. Okay? Uh, or just keep your arms wide, play between the two. You could maybe th make him think you're trying to slide his elbows off. Okay, I'll go like this. That doesn't work. I'll bring him wide, get onto my side, sit up, grab his head, boom, finish. Okay? Super easy. Don't need to memorize left or right. Just get one leg in on the inside. If you can get two legs in, it's even better. It looks awesome. If you can choke your opponent with two legs in, so he's a double under, right? Okay? I wiggle, wiggle, sit up. Man, this looks awesome. I just jacked this guy up. And he thought he was getting a pass, right? So these are some little tricky moves you can play around with. If you have any questions, uh, shoot OTM on the mat.com some questions on their uh, Facebook fan page. And we'll be happy to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you to Sean Patrick Flannery for putting on this event, as well as Henry Akins. And thank you to my instructor. Donald. Thanks very much, guys. The Gazinator, the Gazatron. I always wanted to have a position named after me, the Flanner Flannerator or something. I named it after myself. So. I love that. Uh, John, if we could get you back up here, I just want to ask a couple of questions. Uh, guys, uh, John Lewis started.